My guest is the Honorable Jerry Grafstein, ex-senator, retired. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Howard. Been on before. Delighted but I to want here. to talk about the 60s. Shoot. Uh, the 60s is uh, an important era. Absolutely. And, uh, we have a book now on the Jews in the 60s and how it's the changing decade by Harold Troper. But he talks about you and he tells a story about you. And I wonder, A, if the story is accurate and B, if you could repeat it. It's a story takes place after the Six Day War. You're working for John Turner, I think. Yeah. And he puts his hands out. Can you finish that story? Well, what happens? Well, let me step back just okay. a, a bit further. Um, my activity in the Liberal Party was really uh, very much part of my life. And it happened because of my wife who lives, has to this day lived to regret it. Because what happened is in the early 60s, I graduated. And I was practicing law. My friends were, um, uh, were Harry, Bl Harry Arthurs and Marty Friedland and Harvey Bliss. And all we did every weekend was talk law, law, law. And finally, my wife got fed up with this. And she said, do something interesting in your, with your life. And we're living on a little apartment up on uh, Avenue Road. And I said, like what? And she said, and she picked up a flyer and it said, well, here's an organizational meeting of the York Center Liberal Association. It's tonight. Go to the meeting. Get out of the house. So I went to the meeting, and that night, I was elected president of the, riding, uh, of the Young Liberal Writing Association. Then I was elected president of Toronto. And nine months later, I was elected English-speaking vice president and sitting beside Mr. Pearson on the National Campaign Committee. And I never looked back. And so I was very actively engaged. Uh, my mentors at the time were Dick Stanbury and Keith Davey. All came from that riding. You know, Walter Gordon, Mitchell Sharp. I met them all during that period, particularly Mr. Pearson. And then John Turner invited me to come and be his chief of staff, his first chief of staff in 65. He was minister without portfolio. My wife said, you can go for one year, but then you've got to come home. And that was the deal. I went up there. And uh, my job at the time was to help uh, change the Department of Without Portfolio to the new Department of Consumer and Corporate Affairs. So John and we had a problem because the deputy minister was not really on side with us. So we sent him off to a long vacation. In effect, I became the chief um, uh, thinker, the chief policy advisor, and therefore I went to a lot of sub-cabinet meetings. And one of them was with Mr. Pearson during the Six-Day War. And Pearson was a great hero of mine and a great mentor of mine. And as we walked out, he said, he, sa he, said, he said, how does it feel, Jerry, to be one of the first members of your faith in one of these meetings? True story. And I, he puts his arm around me. And he was very, very avuncular. And I said, Prime Minister, had you had more of us here earlier, the government wouldn't be in the shit it's in today. And he laughed, he stopped, and he said, you know, that's, that's probably true. And the reason for that, quite frankly, is when I went up there, there were very few Jews in the public service. The guy that really made the difference was Mr. Trudeau. Mr. Trudeau was colorblind when it came to... Uh, well, that's one of the things that Hesh writes about in his book. Absolutely. How Trudeau transformed... It's a great book. People should read that book. It's very interesting. <laughs> and he spelled my name right, which is very important to me. <laughs> but why Trudeau? I mean, you, in, in the book... There's the early Trudeau, who's right. very different than right. his reputation. Absolutely, absolutely. And he gets transformed to become this kind of... Well, what happened really is that I ran John Turner's leadership campaign against him in, in 60, uh, 68. Uh, before that time, he, af asked, he offered me, when I was leaving Turner, to be his chief of staff. And then he offered me uh, a job to be ex uh, associate deputy minister of justice law reform. And I said to him, Pierre, you can't appoint me. That's Mr. Pearson's. He says, well, Pearson likes you. I said, Pierre, he ain't going to appoint me. He's not going to appoint a Jewish lawyer from Toronto who's 26 years old to assistant deputy minister. It ain't going to happen. But my offer to you will be simple. Anytime you need me, I'll offer my services for free. You want my advice? You want a speech? I will do that. And so Trudeau and I became sort of friends. We were friends before, but we came closer friends there. But he got upset with me because I ran John Turner's campaign against them. And for two years, he didn't speak to me. Really? He didn't speak to <coughs> me. And the reason for that is that Turner went all the way down. We had four, there were four ballots, and he thought he didn't like that and kept saying, let's go. But at the end of the day, we didn't. And then what happened is that in 72, uh, Turner, or uh, Trudeau got a, had a, a terrible campaign. He ran the land is strong. You might remember that. It was a terrible campaign, but the liberals were not on side. And what happened is that uh, he came to Toronto, and I told him, I know, I think I can help him. And we did a, uh, a little intimate birthday party for Mr. Pearson. 25,000 people showed up. Uh, Toronto held for him. And after that, 
after that magnificent rally, which I organized for him, he asked, he asked me to be his communications advisor. It was the Maple Leaf Gardens. No, it was the Maple Leaf Gardens, yeah, 26,000 people, tw actually 30,000 yeah. people. The, one of the things, though, you differed with Trudeau on a number of things, the war measures. Act. I, I was very critical. I, I was against the war measures, yeah, and I was I wrong. I was wrong. You were wrong. I, I, I believe I was wrong. And because I, you think the... the the I thought the reaction. Symbolism, yeah, symbolism I, I, I knew a lot of guys. I knew a lot of guys. Like yeah. for instance, uh, um, uh, Claude Ryan was a good friend of yeah. mine. Claude Ryan was in prison, and I felt that that was wrong, and I told him that. But I was wrong. In retrospect, I was wrong. Trudeau was right because Trudeau had showed the strength of character to to squash the separatist sentiment in its bud, and it took ten or fifteen years for that to to to, to evolve. And then in in nineteen eighty. And myself and others were the people that convinced them that now that he was reelected, he should not squander his his uh, capital, but really dig in to do something that he always wanted to do was the charter, the charter of rights. Now here we are, m decades later, and Quebec felt they were out. That's wrong. If you take a look at a poll, they'll, they'll show today that 88 percent of Quebecers believe the two most important symbols to keep in Canada and in Quebec is two things, the flag, which was Mr. Pearson's, and the charter. Quebec is a rights-driven society because of Trudeau. They'll never give him credit for it, but truthfully, they, are, they live, they are a living example of the utilization of the Charter of Human Rights. So from my, from my perspective, Trudeau was right, I was wrong, because I've now, I've since discovered that when you have an existential threat to the country, as Israel is facing, strength is very important. You cannot be weak in the face of existential threats. Trudeau demonstrated that in a democratic society, and Israel's fighting that battle today as we speak. But what, there's, uh, you were with him on the meech like Accord. Uh, that was one, but you... Absolutely in favor, uh, against the meech like Accord. Yeah, uh, as a matter of fact, I helped stop it. <coughs> I helped stop yeah. it because, remember, Mulroney had all the provinces all on side and all the rest of it, and what I was in the Senate, and we convinced Trudeau to show up the only time he ever came out of public, private fight That's right. was he, he showed up uh, for a Senate hearing on Meech Lake, and we helped organize it. It was a committee of the whole, and it was a magnificent day. And if you read the Hansard, Trudeau spoke for three hours. He sat in his chair for three hours, just looking at notes. And if you read the Hansard, you didn't have to correct a word. He spoke whole sentences. It's a magnificent transcript. It is if people want to understand Canada, they should get that answered because in three hours he summed up the, the idea of Canada, which is one Canada, one Canada, bilingual, multicultural, one Canada. I'm a one Canadian guy. I don't believe in hyphenated Canadianism. And well, that's one of the things. And that, that was him. But one of the things that, uh, that I think Cash Trober does in his book is show the 60s changes it for Jews, where we become, we may be nominally hyphenated, but we're, we become Canadians. Well, Trudeau was colorblind yeah. when that came, came to thing. As a matter of fact, a little side story I've never told anybody. Uh, shortly after I became, be, was appointed senator, uh, he called me into his office, and he was upset with me. And um, he had heard that I didn't think he would appoint me because I was Jewish. That's what he heard. And I said, no, Prime Minister, you got the story wrong. Uh, you got the story wrong. That wasn't what I said. What I said was, I didn't think it would be appropriate for you to appoint another Jew from Toronto because David Cole, who was a guy I article for, was still in the Senate. I didn't think Toronto should get, in effect, two Jews. You know, there's Italians, there, uh, and Trudeau got very upset with me at the time. He said, Jerry, do you think I appointed you because you were Jewish? It had nothing to do with you being Jewish. It was because of what you and I had done together, what you had done for the Liberal Party. You're the idea man, and I want you to use the Senate as a podium for your ideas. And I was quite embarrassed by the whole story, quite frankly, but that's what happened. So Trudeau was colorblind about that. And if you take a look at the people he appointed, it wasn't based on who their last name. It was based on the fact, uh, were they capable or not? Did they have something to contribute? That, and quite frankly, I was really... Uh, privileged to be one of the people that he felt I could make a contribution to the public life of this country. Well, you really did make a com contribution. Remain, it remains to be seen. No, oh, because you're this future. <laughs> <laughs> oh, exactly. Look to the future. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank Jerry. you very much. It okay. was delightful. Nice seeing you.
I'm biased, of course, but I thought that was a terrific show. We do try to bring you the best in informative and educational programming on Israel and the Jewish world. If you have any comments, suggestions, ideas, please drop us a line. Become a member and support our programming. Join now. I hope you'll tune in next week. I'm Howard Edelman. Good night until then.